that last phrase in the last chant, may you forever be well. We know that things outside will not always be well. But there is a skill you can develop so that inside is always well. And meditation is part of that skill. You're going to be looking at your own mind. as the mind is looking at the breath. In the beginning, you want to pay most attention to the breath. You pay attention to the mind mainly when it's not with a breath, when it's wandering off, bring it back. Try to breathe in a way that the mind likes to stay with the breath. What kind of breathing would feel good right now? Really good down through the torso, down through the legs, down through the arms, all over the body. Which spot in the body seems to be most sensitive to the breath coming in going out? Focus your attention there. And see what kind of breathing feels really good there. If the mind wanders off, bring it back. You're trying to protect this sense of well-being right in that spot inside. That'll be something you can learn how to depend on. At first it may not be all that easy because the mind has this tendency to want to wander around, think about this, think about that, think about three or four things all at once. Especially now that we're more and more used to multitasking. And you were trying to do some monotasking. It takes a while for the mind to feel all right about being with just one thing. But again, if you can make the spot in the body that seems most sensitive to the breathing as comfortable as you can, it gives you a reason to want to stay, to want to protect it. Because your ability to carry this sense of well-being with you is going to be your foundation for dealing with the, the pains of the world outside. Pains in your body, painful words that people say to you. Disheartening things you may see outside. You have to have your protection inside so that you don't, your strength doesn't get sapped. Because endurance is a strength. We tend to look down at it to some extent. The people enduring hardships, enduring harsh words, enduring abusive behavior. It's almost like you endure it, but you don't fight back. That's not what the Buddha is talking about. He's talking about your strength to withstand painful words, painful feelings, and not get blown around by them. When you're not blown around by them, then you can figure out what is the best thing to do in any situation with a lot more clarity and a lot more precision. At the same time, you suffer less. Because the trick to endurance is not so much that you sit there and just take it, take it, take it. You learn how, when they're dishing it out, you don't take it. You learn to step to the side. And it's applies both to painful feelings in the body and to painful words outside. The reason we find it hard to endure these things is because we pick them up and carry them around. And the John Lee's images of someone who's plowing a field it takes all the dirt as it comes off the plow and puts it into a, a bag. Of course, by the time you get to the end of the first furrow, you're already too weighed down to go any much further. You can notice that sometimes as you're sitting and meditating, there's a pain in some part of the body. And it seems like with every moment of pain, you're just adding one more bit of pain to the collection. In other words, you, the pains for the past five minutes or so, they seem to be still there in your mind. You're still carrying them around. And that's where we go wrong. You have to realize that old pains are gone. They're not there right now. 
the fact that it's just sitting in one position makes it seem like the pain is just building and building and building, but it doesn't have to. All you're dealing with right now is the pain right now, and you don't have to carry that around. You note it and think of it going, 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 and maybe another pain may come to take its place, but then it goes away too. A lot of this has to do with your perception. If you think of it as one mass just sitting there and, and accreting as you're, as you're sitting here, then it's going to get heavier and heavier and it's going to be harder to deal with it. But if you think it's with just the sensation right now, right now, right now, and the past sensations are gone. That image that the Buddha recommends. So you think of your mind like space. As he said, no one can write anything on space because there's no surface. So there's no place in your mind where the pain can write, and the same principle applies to other people. No one can write in your mind. What happens is they say things or write things to you. And you take them in and you repeat them again and again and again. You put up a wall of resistance, so they write on the wall. Because your resistance is nobody can say nasty things about me. Or it's not right that they say nasty things. And of course they'll say nasty things and there's your wall, they can write all over it. But when you, when you realize, okay, their karma is their karma, and it only becomes your karma only if you pick it up. So they can write as much as they want, but there's nothing in your mind that they can write on. If you have that perception of mind, that your mind is like space, it makes it a lot easier to go through the world. And again, this doesn't mean that you're going to be passive. It just means that you're not inflicting yourself with the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Their words may be arrows, and they may shoot them at you once, and if you can learn how to sidestep the arrow, that's good. If they hit you, well, you don't have to pull the arrow out and then start stabbing yourself with it again and again and again. Just pull the arrow out, and then look at the situation. And if you can think in these ways, you find it's a lot easier to endure things that you couldn't endure before, because you're not having to carry them around. This is one of the secrets of being strong. You may feel that you're weak and any little added hardship is another weight placed on you. But if you learn how not to carry the weights around, just put them down, then you still have your original strength. And you can use that strength more effectively. So learn to think of your mind as something that nobody can weigh down, nobody can write on, and your goodwill for the world. The Buddha has similar images. Goodwill is being like space. Goodwill is being like the earth. That's way much bigger than anything anybody can do to it. Or the river Ganges, the Buddha says, it's a wide river. And if someone were trying to take a torch to the river, and they wouldn't be able to burn it up. There's just so much water. Think of your goodwill as being inexhaustible like that. And this doesn't necessarily mean, of course, that you're going to treat everybody with tenderness, but it does mean that you're not going to do anything to harm anybody. And if you can learn not to carry around stories about what this person did, what that person did, and how much you've been suffering since who knows when, and how you're gathering all the suffering together and putting it in the bag as you go down the field. Endurance is going to be hard. But if you don't carry these things around, it's going to be easy. Because there's nothing weighing you down. You're not a beast of burden. We're not talking about the endurance of a 
say, an ox that just gets put upon all the time. It's the endurance of someone who knows how not to weigh themselves down. To have that mind-like space that nobody can ride on. The Buddha talks about our perceptions as an important factor in how we shape our minds. So learn how to have a perception like this. Your mind is like space. Your goodwill is like the earth. It's not bigger than anything anyone can do to you. And being like space, there's nothing that anybody can write on your mind. And it's in this way that you can more and more consistently be well. Regardless of what's happening outside. Regardless of the pains in your body. Because the mind has developed the skills by which it can protect itself and keep its endurance strong.